Hello, this is Peter Schuster, and today I want to talk with you about project management. So first off, what is project management? Well, fundamentally, project management is about the planning, tracking, and controlling of project activities, project expenses, project workload, project risks, and pretty much anything having to do with the project. So again, the focus is on planning, tracking, and controlling. So you might ask, okay, this feels like overhead, right? And it almost is the definition of overhead. Uh, yes, but there are some good reasons to do it. So number one, better control. You have better control over your project throughout the project. It will lead to a shorter period of time that it takes to complete your project, or from a design perspective, a shorter development time to have a final product. It should lower your costs in the end, your development costs. It should lead to higher quality, improved productivity, better coordination between people, less stress, Fundamentally, you're going to do project management because it's going to keep you sane. If you try to track a large project without some sort of formal project management system, it's going to be really tough on you. Um, a few other thoughts. Why do project management? Have you ever been in this situation where maybe you've forgotten something at the store? Like you go to the store and you can't remember what it was that you're going to pick up. Or when you get back home, you discover, oh, I left that or you leave an umbrella or glasses or a wallet or something like that at home. Um, have you ever missed a homework assignment? These are fairly common things, right? We can't keep track of everything if we're trying to carry it all in our brain. But imagine this multiplied. Suppose that everyone has lots to do and can get distracted. Okay, that kind of covers all those other <laughs> um, situations as well. Um, but you've got a lot of people working together each task that's being done has some dependency. So you can't start this thing until you do this other thing. And then lots of different people are working on those different tasks. If you're in that situation, then project planning is really what helps you survive. It helps you survive your design projects. It can help you survive your life, your work, whatever. It's a really good tool. There's a lot to project management. It could include things like task lists, timelines, budgets, resource allocation, and so on. We're not gonna deal with all of those for this because I'm not gonna teach you project management in a 10 minute video. But what I'm gonna to try to focus on is some key tools for specifically task and time management on a project. That main tool for doing that is a Gantt chart. So Gantt charts have a number of different components to them. What makes it up? So you've got milestones that's kind of at the core there. You've got things that you need to deliver at specified times in order to keep making project process on your, I'm sorry, progress on your project. Um, you've got tasks. The tasks are the things that allow you to complete the milestone on time. There's sequence, the order that's required to complete the task. Now, sometimes that's just because it's more convenient, but other times it's essential that certain things happen before others. You can't make a sandwich until you buy the bread to make the sandwich. Um, that's really dependency. I got a little bit ahead of myself. I'm off sequence there. Dependency is when the order of tasks is critical to their delivery. Duration, it's important to know how long tasks are gonna take you, at least to have an estimate so that you don't get way out of, um, off of your plan. And then finally, resources. And resources can be a lot of things. For our project planning, we're going to focus primarily on people. So if you're on a team project, you want to identify who's going to do what. There are obviously lots of resources, money being a primary one, and uh, those are important for project management in general. Let me go through the process of creating a Gantt chart specifically to manage a project. So number one, identify your key milestones. And for example, on a senior project at Cal Poly, you've got a number of different milestones that you have to deliver on. Scopes of work, defining what it is you're gonna be doing. Preliminary design reviews, stating what your concept direction is. Uh, critical design reviews, where you're reporting out, here's what we're going to build. Things like that are your milestones for your project. So let's just pick that scope of work and use that as an example. When you're creating a Gantt chart, the first step after identifying your milestones is to zero in on each milestone and then list all the tasks that you will need to do to prepare for the milestone. This is really critical and it's fairly hard if you've never done a design project before. What are all the things you have to do? 
So there's a bit of brainstorming that happens here. So for example, um, if you were to deliver that scope of work, that's that initial description of what the project is and what you're gonna do to deliver it. You probably have to do some technical literature searching. You probably will want to interview the sponsor, the person who is encouraging you to do this project. Uh, you're gonna review what the current state of the art is or the existing process or existing products. You're gonna do a patent search, what has been done already. Maybe do some interviewing of users, look at similar products. Uh, set up a customer form. These are some things. You notice that I'm using this kind of post-it view. I really recommend that you do this before going into any sort of software on a Gantt chart. So write down all the things, one per post-it note, because you're going to be rearrange, rearranging them in a moment. Um, the next thing that I encourage you to do after writing the tasks you think are required is make those smart tasks. What I mean by that are they are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Let me talk about each of those real quick. Specific means it is something that you, um, you defining exactly what you're gonna do. And by reading that task name, you know what it is. Measurable means you know when it's done. There's something that comes out of it that says, yeah, I completed that task. Achievable means it's something you can actually do. You have control over it, it's reasonable in terms of time. Relevant means it is actually important to the project. It's not peripheral activity. And time bound means that it has a, it, it can be contained in a period of time. You aren't necessarily specifying the amount of time, but you will at some point say, here's when it needs to be done. Tasks should be the, also should be things that you are going to do. So start each one with a verb. Okay, so again, coming back to this, we're gonna rewrite these to be smart. We'll look just at these first two, the technical literature search you might do and interviewing sponsor. So for technical literature search, there are a couple steps here. You actually need to do some identification of what those technical challenges are for your design. And then you need, some, need to do some searches for the solutions to those challenges. If you're gonna interview a sponsor, you might need to create a list of questions first. And then you probably need to schedule the meeting and then you need to actually have the interview. So for example, these are some ways to turn your general ideas of what you need to do into smart tasks for your project. Uh, the next thing you wanna do after you've got a whole set of smart tasks, and you can see we've now got a, another subset that I'm looking on at here. Um, you're gonna again do this on post-its. Post post <laughs> you're gonna rearrange them into the order that makes sense to you. So for example, I'm going to shift things around a little bit here. Um, probably want to do that technical challenges first. Uh, then we can search the library database. Then we can schedule our meeting with a sponsor, create a list of questions, and go and interview them. So that might be a, a layout for these five tasks. Um, you're going to have a whole bunch of tasks, and you're going to want to figure out what the best order is for them. So that's a step three. Step four then is to tie these together, link the tasks that actually depend on each other. For example, you can't go and search the library database for technical challenges until you know what those are. So that has to, the identification has to happen before the search. Uh, similarly, before you cr create a list of questions for your sponsor, you should know what the problems are that you're dealing with in your design challenge. What are the technical issues? So you can ask those questions to your sponsor. Obviously, you can't interview the sponsor until you've scheduled the meeting with them and created the list of questions to talk to them. So these are sequences or dependencies that you're gonna be implementing in your Gantt chart. And uh, the way I like to do this one is, again, I've got the post-it notes, but now I put them on a whiteboard and I can actually draw these lines on the whiteboard, move them around and waste the line and, and add another line. Um, it's a fairly dynamic process. And all of this, again, needs to happen before you even approach a software. Then you want to estimate how long it's going to take to complete each task. That's an important thing for your overall planning. And this is the time on task, not the time period over which you're going to be doing the task. Although some people prefer that. It, it's really somewhat up to you when you set up your Gantt chart and how you're going to space things out. So for example, spending time determining what the technical challenges are on your project might be three hours. It might be three weeks. It depends on the project. Searching a library database or a series of databases, hopefully you can do that in a few hours. Um, probably not fully digesting the information, so we might have left out a task here. 
uh, scheduling the sponsor meeting. An hour is a pretty long time to do scheduling, maybe 15 minutes. Um, creating a list of questions, probably spend about an hour on that and the actual interview an hour. So this is an example of determining the amount of time. And I like to put these right on those post-it notes. Then lastly, you want to identify who's going to do each of these tasks. And that means if you're on a team, you identify their names. If you're working on a project individually, you can skip this test, this uh, step. So I'm going to identify some people to work on each one of these. If I had left space on my post-it notes, I'd put the names right there. That would be much better, but I didn't really set these post-it notes up for that. All right, so now we want to put it into chart form, actually get it on a Gantt chart. And that's a separate video that I'm gonna show you. Let me just do a quick review here. When you're building a Gantt chart, before you ever approach software, you wanna first lift, list out those deliverables or milestone events. You wanna brainstorm all the tasks that are required to achieve each of those deliverables. And remember to make those tasks specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. You then are going to choose an order for the tasks and do this on the post-it notes, move them around, figure out the right order, and then link them together on a, on a whiteboard. It's a great place to do this. Draw the lines in between the tasks. And then estimate duration for each task and choose a team member to lead each task. Once you're all done with that, you go into the software. And that's the next video.